Wittershins Radio. Wittershins. And well, I think we heard some 45 Grave and Derek yep. Halmore Orchestra with the Wittershins theme song. Uh, we are in the second day now of the Wittershins uh, Marathon. Wh- Witchcon Marathon, where we are going to attempt to interview everyone that we possibly can. That actually sounds good. Witchcon Marathon. Witchcon Marathon. Well, so I, yeah. It says right here that, oh, you can't see the title, but yeah. it says it on the show. You didn't see that. Oh, don't tell me you thought of it. I did. <laughs> it says it right there. You know, it said, it said it right there before you said that, so you can't take credit for that. Well, it was just coincidental when you did it. Of course. <laughs> but we don't believe in coincidence. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, tonight, we have a, a returning guest. Actually, today. Today. It's not, it's not today, even tonight yet. Yes. Ellen Everett Hopman. Yes. Uh, author of some of my favorite books. And Arch Druid and stuff. Mm-hmm. And she's going to tell us about a workshop. I, I, you looked at the workshop. I tried not to work because to look at the workshop, so I'll be surprised and ask a lot of questions. Yeah. But Ellen, how are you? <laughs> oh well, uh, I'm in the middle of a snowstorm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh wow. I'm in Massachusetts. Yeah, okay. and it, it's it's quite beautiful. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, that's what's happening here. <laughs> We just had yeah. tornado watches last night over here. Yeah, all, all of a sudden, New Orleans started getting tornadoes Yeah, in, in the last couple of years. Yeah, I, t- I just saw on the news that it's a record-breaking, I think over 150 or 130 or something this year My um, so far. It's, it's crazy. Which is unreal. Yeah, it's because like, we, we worry about hurricanes in the summer, so at least in the winter yeah. we don't have any disasters, but now yeah. it's tornadoes. I'm sure everything's yeah. fine. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure nothing's broken. Well, I think I think Houston got it pretty badly. Yep. Um, I, I don't think too. we have had anything touched down. Yeah. I haven't heard of any. I mean, we had a we had a warning, and they told us to you know not to go outside and find our safe place mm-hmm. and all that. But mm-hmm. but nothing nothing happened here at all. So you're in Welcome mass- to climate change. Yeah. yeah. This yep. is going to yep. be the new normal. Yep. Hopefully not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, it probably was. Yeah, now they got. Uh, I, I swear that was a hurricane over California. I was watching it on the radar. It spins just like a hurricane, and then they had hurricane force winds, and you know, that's not supposed to happen either. But everything's fine. Let's talk about the weather. Yeah. <laughs> so you're uh, you're Massachusetts. You're one of those Salem witches, or another other. No, place? I live in Western Massachusetts, West. about at least two hours away. I'm. Mm-hmm. West of of Boston, west of Salem. Okay. I live in an oak forest, Woo. an incredibly beautiful area. Um, I have three miles of woods behind the house, and I get bear, and I get moose, and I get deer, and I I have four wow. possums that come to my door, <laughs> nice. and I feed them at night. They're beautiful animals, very clean. Possums are great. Um, so yeah. a, a druid in an oak forest. How yeah. convenient. Yes, <laughs> I, know, I know. How corny is that? <laughs> uh, definitely the place to be. Yep. So what, um, 
You, this your third year at WitchCon? Have you been at all of them or a second year? I think I've been at all of them. Okay. You know, I lose track after a while, but yeah, yeah, I've done, and and I'm doing he- Hexfest. Oh, this cool. Summer. We're just, then we're gonna see. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. I, for, I I I keep looking at the list and you know being surprised by people who are on it, but I then I forget. Yes. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll be there. On the list? I, I, everybody's on the list. <laughs> yes. As far for, as I can tell. For WitchCon, yeah. yeah. I, it, it always just kind of blows me yeah. away sometimes. Some of the people it, were on the, the same largest, stage. It's um, pagan online event, I believe. It is. Mm-hmm. It's got to be. Because if there was yeah. a larger one, I never heard of it. Yeah. Well, and, and you and know, there's I. There's going to be about a thousand people are going to attend, I heard. Yeah. And I've seen other online pagan festivals, and I go and I look through the list of presenters, and I'm just like, who? What? Huh? Who's that? Yeah. You know, there's just yeah. nobody I've ever heard of. Well, there's a, there's a, the thing is, there's a really this one good I've heard mix. Of of there are yeah. people we haven't heard of. Well, yeah, of, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, then people who, you know, yeah. most people have heard of. Well, and I would think if you're one of those people that nobody's ever, ever heard of, it would be good to be on a bill with people that yeah. have been heard of. Absolutely. To help you. Absolutely. <laughs> and he, you know, mm-hmm. posts everybody's bio on the page so you get to, you know, yeah. know what they're all about. Oh, my about God, I've got to upgrade workshops. my bio. Still yeah. says I'm the owner of a, a cult store in Hollywood. Oh yeah, you gotta change that. <laughs> Other thing I gotta change. Yeah. Probably my picture too. Was the last time you changed your bio? <laughs> are, you, are you talking to yeah, me? Ellen, yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. changed my bio. Well, the only time I change it is when a new book comes out, and that's yeah. about every year. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and what's the newest one? What's your newest book? Um, well, the newest one that came out, uh, when did it come out? Last year. We're now in 23. So in 22, um, the book is called Once Around the Sun, Stories, Crafts, and Recipes hmm. to Celebrate the Sacred Earth Year, which, as with most of my children, I have another children's book, but it was designed for kids. I was thinking of kids. But as it turns out, and this is what always happens, covens, groves, you know, uh-huh. mature people, everybody seems to like it. They find it useful because it goes through all the major pagan holidays. And then I give a, a story to read out loud mm-hmm. um, and then a recipe and a craft. So whether it's making wreaths, you know, using magical herbs, and I give all the proper the magical properties of the plants. Mm-hmm. So you can make a crown with magical properties. Mm-hmm. You can make a wreath, or making wands. You know, um, it, it, for Ostara, you know how to dye eggs using natural herbs and huh. foods that are in the refrigerator. You know, things like nice. that. Mm-hmm. So every festival has a hands-on project. Which is great for kids, but it's also good for groups. You know, it's a yeah. nice bonding thing. And mm-hmm. then I have a recipe, so you can eat the food that traditionally goes with the festival. So if, if it's an mm-hmm. Irish uh, story w- and an Irish festival, then I'll have an Irish dish. You know, if it's Scottish, mm-hmm. there's a Scottish dish. If it's Polish, there's a Polish dish. You know, uh-huh. and I, it's various different cultures, um, German, uh, Italian. Um, anyway, that's that's the newest one, and it seems to be, according to the publisher, it's doing very well. Great, very nice. Wh- who is the publisher? Um, Inner Traditions Bear and Company is the publisher. Okay, nice. um, but international distribution is by Simon and Schuster. Uh-huh. Okay, so people can get it anywhere. You know, uh-huh. anywhere in the world. Very cool, very cool. If you just look up my name on Amazon, all the books will come up. Right, right. Yeah. Or you can go to my website, which is com. It's just my name, dot com. All the books are there. I was just talking to a, a friend of ours that's an author. Um, he's, he'd been on the show, too, and somebody was commenting on the show. He says, yeah, we, I, I'm so bummed I can't get that book on Amazon UK. And so I went and told him. I, ho- I hope that's easy to fix, but I didn't really know you had to set up both of those, or maybe there's just something he didn't click. Um, but yeah, hmm. hope, hopefully, gonna yeah. Fix well, that. how does that work? I mean, I I didn't know that. I mean, I've been contacted. For example, Amazon in South Africa contacted me and asked me if I wanted to um, share my novels 
in South Africa. So yeah. I had to say yes. Hmm. And then they started. Before that, they weren't there. I didn't know that. Um, huh. They, you know, I don't know how you do. Anyway, I didn't know that they were separate. They're all separate. France, Italy, huh. you know, they're all separate. Huh. I've never had to figure that out. <laughs> no. But yeah, well, for an American, you just go to Amazon in the U.S. and yeah, yeah, yeah. you're covered, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so they go but, Yeah, all my books are on Amazon, at least the American Amazon, uh -huh. um, if you want to do it that way, which is probably the easiest way to get books. Yes. These days. I mean, ever since yeah. the pandemic, God, I... Unfortunately, I go to Amazon first for most things. Unless, yeah, unless I mean, there's a local we, shop, we even and I know would I get, get like you know cleaning supplies and stuff from there. Yeah, when we weren't leaving the house. <laughs> it, you know, shopping habits have changed. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, everything keeps changing. <laughs> you know, yeah. everybody wants to buy online now. Yeah. Yeah. So what? Um, what's your? What? What can you tell us about your workshop this year without giving too much away? Well. Something that I always see, I mean, I'm on Facebook, right? So mm -hmm. I follow conversations and, and a lot of people, well, there's a lot of beginners, obviously, but then after a few years of that or uh, something a little bit more um, advanced, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And, um, well, so, I mean, I, I'm a Druid, right? And I'm a Celtic Reconstructionist Druid, so I'm used to deep scholarship that's what we're into we like looking at seventh century manuscripts and yeah. old wisdom tales and old poetry and that's what we're into but yeah. what i noticed was whenever i went it, all my friends are witches i have to say my best <laughs> friends are all witches so i go to their gatherings and you know the ritual is usually the same i have to say with with just slight changes you call in the directions you call mm. in the goddess and the god mm. yeah um and you call in maybe the nature spirits and the fairies and mm -hmm. elementals and you know and then uh, you raise some power and then you yeah. dismiss everybody and then you eat <laughs> you know, you have yeah there's kind yeah, of a yeah. formula well there was yeah. But, I don't know but with some of these is, new kids if there is <laughs> yeah we haven't been to a ritual with other people in yeah. years yeah Oh, well, you can do it if you do it outside. Just, mm -hmm. you can, I mean, that's how we started during COVID. Um, we just said, let's do it outdoors. And I think 30 or 40 people showed up. And everybody was so happy. They were <laughs> thrilled, you know. Yeah. They said, oh, we, we haven't done anything like this in years, you know. <laughs> and they were just so happy. So just do it outside, you know. Yeah. But anyway, so so I keep going to their things. And... You know, the directions, north, south, east, west, are completely different um, from what I know of Celtic directions. You huh. know, for example, in Celtic thinking, fire is in the north, because that's the place yeah. where the sun never sets, and it's the ah. place of battle, and, you know, anyway, um, and hmm. Wiccans put uh, earth in the north, right? Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so everything is different. Uh-huh. Um, and, and it, you know, so I always have to feel, I feel like I'm entering a strange new country, like I'm dealing with the natives, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's how I feel. And I have to transpose it in my head, you know, and, right. okay, so they're going to, they're going to put earth in the north, fine, you yeah. know, <laughs> like, and I, and I live with it, right? But anyway, so I thought, um, wouldn't it be nice, uh, to have something rather than just saying the goddess and the god and i know it's because philosophically you're supposed to think all the goddesses are one goddess and all the gods are one god but right. but in, for druids that doesn't exist you know we're polytheists so we're very specific if we call on a goddess we want to know which goddess because they're all different you know they have different personalities bridget is not the morrigan you know it's <laughs> like anyway so i thought why not uh create a book and that's what I'm working on now. So what I'm going to be talking about at WitchCon is actually the beginnings of another book because mm -hmm. I'm always working on a book, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what I did was um, I'm starting to research various deities and from many different cultures. So it's, it's, it's quite broad, but anything from, you know, Celtic to 
Japanese to Egyptian to whatever. But for each deity, um, I, I introduce the deity. I try to find some genuine ancient quotes, if I can, about the deity. Mm -hmm. And then I talk about what offerings are specific to the deity. Mm -hmm. So that you can work very specifically, you know, with a deity, give them the things that they like, which is polite, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this, you know, set up an altar to them with the, with the correct colors and scents and flavor. Um, maybe make a dish that's appropriate to them, do it at the correct time of year, you know, <laughs> that mm. kind of thing. It's just a little, it's a way of introducing polytheism. I guess. And res respect. Mm -hmm. As I, respect. I always, you know, the, we get, you know, I'm on, I'm, I'm, I'm in the sewer of, uh, of social media. I'm on TikTok. <laughs> I'm watching the stuff that goes on there. And, you know, there's... He's shameless. They're like, gate, you know, the gatekeeping and everything's a closed practice. And, you know, even to the point of gods. You know, there's some people say, you, you can't work with that God. You can't work with that goddess unless you're this, that, or oh, the other. God. And it's like, you know, it's oh, about goddess. respect. <laughs> yes. If you, you, know, you do the proper research, find out their likes and dislikes. That's all part of the well, magical... That, but it's all exactly. the new people who are saying that. I know, I know. And that's, that's the problem is that yeah. you let the new people talk. <laughs> yeah. But it's a magical rapport. We're setting up a rapport with this thing. And I always say, okay, once you do all those things work a long time with that before asking for anything from that deity and people yeah, just want exactly. to immediately i just met you can i borrow money yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, or when or, you, or, you accept somebody's facebook request and they want you to like their pages right yeah, away yeah, yeah, yeah. and you don't yeah. even know them that, yeah, that <laughs> rapport. yeah. yeah. <laughs> well uh, yeah in celtic thinking which again is what i'm used to uh in the old druid way you different groups of people had specific deities uh, for example, the poets worked with Bridget. Um, mm -hmm. The goldsmiths worked with Lou. Uh, you know, like there were Miach or Diankecht for the healers, you know. They were kind of like guilds, and each guild had one specific deity that was, that governed that particular craft. So you formed a relationship. It's almost like a family relationship. That person or that deity <laughs> becomes very close to you. Um, I mean, I've been working with Bridget now for over 30 years, uh, probably 40 years now. So I have her on my altar. Um, I light candles to her. I make offerings to her. I, I make a lot of different offerings at Imbolc. I make crafts that are specific to her. Um, and that, by the way, is in the book, Once Around the Sun, mm -hmm. the Imbolc chapter, which is coming up. <laughs> yeah, there's a story better. about young Bridget, mm -hmm. and um, and then there's crafts that you can make, like the Bridget's crosses and the uh, Bridget's girdle, which is something that you step I, through. I've never pulled and, off the Bridget's cross. I just I'm not a weaver, I guess. Always comes out weird. <laughs> yeah, I mean it takes practice. Yeah, it does yeah. take practice. Um, but anyway, so so they're very. I mean, I have very specific ways of working with her, and. I also have a cat named Bridget, <laughs> but, uh, but, but, she's but that's, that's what I'm introducing um, in the book, and that's what I'm going to be talking about in the workshop again, is just how to work with specific deities, and then they become like a family member, they become kin over time, but mm -hmm. like you said, it takes time, it's mm -hmm. not something that happens instantly, you know, they yeah. have to get to know you, you have to get to know them. And different people will resonate with different deities. Like, there's hunting deities, for example. And yes. It would be really nice to put a, a hunting tartan on the altar and have a hunting horn and some stag antlers and mm -hmm. burn a, a resinous incense, um, mm -hmm. like cedar, you know, something like that. Yeah. And that's a hunting deity. But then you have goddesses who like flowers. You know, I'm thinking of Aphrodite. <laughs> but, I mean, their, her altar is going to look completely different, you know. Um, seashells and, and flowers and floral colors and perfumes. And <laughs> yeah. She likes ju jewelry. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, so that's the... I'm just trying to introduce people to that concept, I guess. Yeah. 
Well, we've got so many resources now when we want to research the likes and dislikes of, of a god or goddess. Like, I think back in my day, you know, there was, there was two books. There was a Witch's God and the Witch's Goddess. And then there was a few others, but those were, were your standard go-tos where it was easy to look them up, learn some general likes, dislikes, what they rule over, so, that kind of thing. Like an encyclopedia. the Witch's God? Is that the Horned God? Well, the Witch's God and the Witch's Goddess were uh, kind of like encyclopedias of goddesses and gods. It was, uh, oh, God, okay. who did that? Was it the Ferrars? Jesus, I don't know. It was in the 80s. Uh, they were pretty common Llewellyn books. Every shop would have them. Uh, everybody had them on their shelves. But, you know, we had a few books that we could pick from if we wanted to research these gods and goddesses. Um, now, they, you know, they've got the whole Internet, and they're just... They don't want to do the work. <laughs> no, they don't, and that's that's something that's very disappointing to me. I mean, mm-hmm. back in the day, yeah. back in the day, back in the day, <laughs> um, when we didn't have the internet, mm-hmm. um, you know, we actually got books, we read books, we went to the library, um, we we traveled, we went to, you know, I went to foreign countries just so I could learn about uh, different cultures. You know, I've been to Ireland three times. Uh, lived in Scotland for a whole summer, then went back another time. Um, you know, and, and I, I mean, that's what I did with my money. <laughs> I have no money now. But, but literally, I mean, I spent untold thousands of dollars just traveling so that I could learn about cultures. And, um, you know, if I wanted, like my first book, Tree Medicine, Tree Magic, yes. when I researched trees, I had to go to the science library at the University of Massachusetts, the Moral Library, mm-hmm. and I had to look up the trees, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Now you can just go to Wikipedia or something. But, um, yeah, yeah but it was, you know, but, but the thing is, we really, we put in a lot of time and effort, and um, there's depth to that, I think, as a result. Yeah. Kids today will never know what that was like. Kids today. Yeah. Kids today. <laughs> but you know, so longer I go, I, you know, like places like like well, TikTok, they they first default to one minute videos, and then now Instagram and YouTube offer that option, really short videos. You call them reels or shorts, that kind of thing. Well, they have those on Facebook now. And yeah, and, and, and they have them on seconds. Facebook. Yeah, and And, you just, you can't really learn anything or say anything of any depth in a minute. No. There's just, it's going to dumb down the world, or it is dumbing down the world, I think. And those are, you know, you're always saying your your shorter videos are the ones that have the most views. And that's the thing. Those are the ones that get get traffic. Yeah, that's sad. I try to just teach little pieces of stuff, but, you know, if you don't watch all of the pieces, none of it's going to really click. Yeah. (laughs) I try, I try, I try. Yeah. I don't well, recommend it. Don't go on TikTok. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> if any kids are listening, um, there's great value in having an actual human teacher. Uh, mm-hmm. Try to find somebody who's been around for a while, who's made the mistakes, <laughs> who's yeah. learned something. And, I mean, it's a whole different animal when you're working with a group and doing ceremony with a group and... Yeah, you know, learning with the group, and it's just a completely different process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that—that's the old way, you know. Yeah. I hope we don't lose it. Yeah. Well, there are places where you know we have the old way and a new way. You know, people are doing what you described through Zoom or uh, other group video chat things. I, people are even doing rituals. There's like cyber covens. I still don't know. Yeah. I, I, I still don't know what to think pe- about that, but I, it makes me feel old to not approve of that. <laughs> I was just going to say, a lot of people, unfortunately, don't have any other options where they live. Yeah. So yeah. it's helpful to them yeah. to have well, some the other sort of thing, alternative. During COVID, um, mm-hmm. my group, Tribe of the Oak, tribeoftheoak.org, if anybody's interested, mm-hmm. um, we started doing online rituals during COVID specifically mm-hmm to help people who were stuck at home. That's why we did it. But now it's kind of, people are losing interest in that. Now they want to gather live. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good that people just didn't get stuck in that. But then we've got, you know, we've still got stuff like WitchCon. You'll learn a hell of a lot at WitchCon. Yep. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I urge everybody to, to plug into WitchCon because it's not just a one-day event. Mm -hmm. Once the event is over, you can watch, once you're registered, you can watch anything for the rest of your life. You know, you can, we're yeah. we're what, still getting through everything. There, there's I think, so much I think there's still stuff from the first year I haven't yeah. watched yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And are there 99 presenters again? Is that how many there are? I, I haven't counted it, um, but, r r you know, roughly 100. No. Yeah. Yeah, last last time I think there were 99. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so so think of that. It's like 99 classes yep. that you can attend. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, let me, yeah. I, I should probably read the thing while we're talking about it here. Okay. Let's see. Oh, it's con. Bring the magic to you. And I swear by next year I'm going to have this memorized because I never change it. <laughs> Bring the magic to you. March 3rd to the 5th, 2023. Join the largest live stream magical conference in the world featuring nearly 100 witches and conjurers on live video from across the globe. Uh, watch classes mm -hmm. live and then rewatch on demand. Whatever you like, like we just said. Um, which con online presenters are the preeminent masters of the magical arts and hail from across the rainbow spectrum of occult and spiritual practices. Registration is limited to 1,000 attendees and includes all live video classes, rituals, and performances, as well as access to recordings of every class after the event has ended via our on demand library. So you won't miss a single magical moment. Now, I have to say, our host is off on you know one of his fabulous vacations. We all get to see pictures on, on Facebook about. And uh, right before he left, he told me, they're running out of room, kids. Yeah. Yeah, you want to get over there and secure your spot. You know, maybe if there's enough people o over, he'll just buy a server and get more bandwidth. But it's a bandwidth thing. There's only so much bandwidth this thing can handle. Yep. So even though it's a digital conference, thousand attendees, y'all. Um, attendees and fans will love shopping in our virtual Vendorium featuring powerful ritual tools, signed books and exquisite jewelry, and handmade spellcrafts. Our virtual meet and greet. That's probably one of the funnest parts about yep. it. <laughs> Let's attendees yeah. and fans alike meet and chat with presenters live on Zoom. And it's a great way to meet and know your favorite teachers. WitchCon Online is live streamed through the thing just jumped off the screen. Live streamed through the Hex Education Network on Crowdcast, a web based platform with no need to download. You can do this on your phone, people. Matter of fact, I'll be doing it my end on the phone. <laughs> it worked out well all of those years. I remember the first year they demanded that we have a hardwired connection. So I still had, had this big wire running through the house. Marta hated that. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, and back with our guest, Ellen Everett Hopman. All right, so we talked a bit about the class, probably didn't give too much away, but you talked to uh, Bridget. You hit on Bridget. Yep. She always been one of my favorites. Like I told you, I never really pulled off the uh, Bridget's Cross. Uh, but she's one of the ones that maintained her goddesshood like she yep. she got converted into a saint yep. where so many goddesses got converted into demons if that's legitimate them converting gods and saints but anyway yeah. <laughs> um, from from what i can see a lot of her practices survive you know her her holy days the same um a lot of the rituals are the same and she you know gets to be a saint so uh, yeah, badass. she didn't convert. Yes, she didn't she convert. She did not convert. No, she no, didn't. No, what happened, she was so important in Ireland. Uh -huh. uh, Bridget was Briga. She was the high one. Mm -hmm. Bri, she was the high one. She was the ultimate goddess. And um, they just couldn't let go of her. Yeah. Um, I mean, I Ireland is kind of a special case um, when it when it comes to... Um, Paganism, yeah. <laughs> as they say, scratch the surface of an Irish Catholic, and, and you'll find a pagan. Uh, <laughs> they never really let go of their pagan ways. And during the witch persecutions, I have a book called "The Real Witches of New England," which mm -hmm. I recommend if you're interested in the history. Uh -huh. But um, the Irish never—I mean, they only killed four witches total wow. during the height of the witch panic, and those witches <laughs> were people who were incredibly obnoxious who went way out of their way 
to get in trouble. <laughs> they know, had it like, coming. They, <laughs> yeah, it's like they were walking down the street dressed in black with eye, heavy eye makeup and jewelry and, you know, I don't know what they were doing, but they, they really, they were, you had to work really hard to yeah. get yourself in trouble because the Irish mentality is very tribal and you don't kill people in your tribe, you know, you just don't do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you protect people in your tribe, you take care of your own because a tribe is a family, you know, you yeah. don't go killing your cousin or something. But um, anyway, so so Bridget was so important that when everybody was quote unquote converted, yeah. because paganism is coming back in, in Ireland, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, thank the gods, yeah. but um, she became Saint Bridget. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and it's really, it's like this, this transition from goddess to saint, it was, um, like you said, the practices are the same, the Bridget's Cross. The Bridget's Cross is not a Latin cross. The Bridget's mm. Cross is an equal-armed mm. solar cross, yeah. which is basically a swastika. Don't anybody faint. <laughs> but the words, <laughs> swastikas were very sacred before... Herr Hitler took over. Yeah. Um, they were sacred in India. They were even sacred in Native American tradition. It's a sun symbol. It's a symbol of the sun uh, moving across the sky. And of course, Bridget is a fire goddess. Mm -hmm. So for pagans, you make the equal arm solar cross. Um, Christians like to say that it's a Christian cross, but the Christian cross doesn't look like that. The Christian cross has the long yeah. base and the short arms and the short top. Yep. 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 The Bridget's cross is a it's a swastika. It's a equal armed solar cross. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Um so anyway, the Christians think it's Christian, pagans know it's pagan. Um the other thing that you do on in bulk eve is if you have any rags in the house, like old sheets or something, you tear them up and you make little strips of cloth. In Ireland, they call them rags. In Scotland, they call them cluties. Clute means cloth. Clutie means little cloth. Mm -hmm. And you put the strips of rag in a basket, and you, you leave it outside on in bulk eve so that when Bridget passes by, she will bless the cloth. Mm -hmm. And then throughout the year, when you need healing, uh, you tie the cloth like around your arm or your leg or whatever part of you is hurting. Mm -hmm. If an animal is sick, you can tie the cloth around their neck, um, you know, their paw, whatever. And so that's that's one thing that you do. I always put out a brat, B-R-A-T, brat, which mm -hmm. is a cloak. It's a Bridget's cloak. I have a special one. And again, if somebody is sick, uh, you le you put your brat out on in bulk eve and then bring it in the next morning. Bridget has blessed it. So when somebody's sick, you can put the brat around their shoulders um, all year. And uh, I know somebody who puts out her underwear. <laughs> <laughs> her, her bloomers. <laughs> and she says that it's to give her to empower her <laughs> when she needs courage and power to move in the world. That's a good because idea. she knows that her, her bloomers have been yeah. blessed by Bridget. You know? Magic bloomers. <laughs> I, I hope you have one for your knee. <laughs> <laughs> she said she hopes you have one for your knee. You were telling us earlier. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I have, I have little... Uh, yeah, I, I fell on my knee and it's quite painful. I have... I'll have to tie some cooties around my knee. That, yeah. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> I forgot about that. But, um, yeah, so I put a candle out, and around here it's always snow on the ground, so I have a candle that burns all night in the entranceway. Um, I put out uh, a bride doll. I make a bride doll, and bride is another name for Bridget. Mm -hmm. Bride is actually the Scottish name. Um, okay. Brigia or Bridget is Irish, but it's Vrija. Um, and every year in the summer, I collect wheat. Um, if I can't find any wheat, usually I can find wheat, but if I can't, then I will collect wild grasses that have uh, grain-like tops, anything with grain. Yeah. And then um, on 
the week of in bulk, the week before in bulk, I soak it in the tub overnight so that the uh, so that the straw or the grain or the grasses get soft. And that may be why your Bridget's Cross is giving you a hard time. You're supposed to soak the grain overnight, and then it's more pliable to work with. Yeah, I don't. But think anyway, you that. <laughs> um, and then I make a bride doll out of wheat, and I also put that outside on in bulk eve for her to bless mm -hmm. and then that goes on the altar or the, in my bedroom you should see my bedroom it's unbelievable because <laughs> uh, i've been doing this for years so i have them hanging from the ceiling and it's a good thing not too many people go in there because they'd be scared to death <laughs> 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 but, but i have these these dolls and the thing is and this is a true story one year i had and Druids in my grove can attest to this. Um, we had a drought here in Massachusetts, and it was terrible. And for several months, so worried about the wild animals, because I couldn't imagine, you know, if you're a deer or even yeah. a bird or anything, yeah. what are you supposed to do, right? I mean, yeah. I had a, bir a bird bath, but I was thinking, what about the bears? You know, where do they get their water, right? And I felt terrible. So when the, when the grove met at my house I said let's do a rain making ritual so I took four of the bride dolls when I say I have a lot I'm not kidding I think <laughs> I still have 12 hanging but um, we took four of them and we put one in a empty stream bed that was just bone dry mm -hmm. so that was for water we put one on a stone uh, we hung one from a tree and we burned one in the fire so that was sort of the four four elements yeah. right that night <laughs> a storm came up wow. it was incredible it rained for the first time in two months and the stream was full of water i hope our friends in california are listening to this i think they're good on water right now well, they, yeah, right now they're okay. <laughs> for, but they, they said SoCal is, is still dry. It, it yeah. only helped the northern parts. So the drought just went away for, what, a week? Like, yeah, huh. more but or less. We were Cal California natives, and I think yeah. my whole life there was two day, or two really short time periods where we were out of drought. Yeah. It was just pretty constant. Yeah. But, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good – do you publish that spell anywhere where yeah. people can get all of no, it? No, I haven't <laughs> – no, I haven't published it, but I'm I'm your listeners now know. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But the thing is, each of those bride dolls was made with intention because I always as I'm making it, um, you know, it's made out of straw, but it's held together with with a thread, cotton mm -hmm. thread, I, to make the arms and the head yeah. and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and as I tie the knots in the thread, I'm always um, saying prayers mm -hmm. um that was one of the old words for witches by the way whisperers and mm -hmm. that's exactly what i do i whisper a prayer or an intention mm -hmm. into the knot and then i tie the knot you know and then i put them outside on in bulk eve so bridget can bless them mm -hmm. so this isn't just a question of throwing together four wheat dolls you know right, it's not right. like that yeah. i mean these are that represents four years of work yeah. and four in bulk eaves. <laughs> but yeah, people in California can do it. I mean, you could you could put out four of them, I guess. Uh, when is in bulk? It's in about a it's week. It's coming up. Wait, where yeah. are we today? Yeah. It's about a yeah, week. Really soon. <laughs> yeah. It's next week. Yeah, yeah next yeah. week. And um, in bulk eve, and of course, calculating when in bulk is, that's a whole other <laughs> can of worms because yeah. traditionally it's uh the first quarter moon it's not the first the okay. idea of having a festival on the first is actually a roman idea the yeah. romans had the calends they were called the calends that's where we get the word calendar mm -hmm. and the whole idea of february 1st may 1st august 1st mm -hmm. november 1st that's a roman idea so if you mm -hmm. want to you know you, i mean Bridget understands, though. She understands. If you put it out on the eve of in bulk with all the other pagans, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> she'll come by 
But if you want to be really correct, do it on the first quarter moon. First quarter moon. First quarter moon. So whatever is closest yeah, to the first of February. To in bulk, yeah. Yeah. Um, in, in bulk is the first quarter moon. Beltane, of course, is the full moon, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because you're out, you know, celebrating in the woods and all mm-hmm. that. And then um, Lunasa, or what, which is called Lamas, would be the last quarter moon because the year is starting to go into the dark, right? And then yeah. Samhain is at the dark of the moon. Right, right. Um, because that's when you're supposed to stay inside because it's too dangerous and scary to go outside. So that's the old way of, of doing it. Yeah. I think the first quarter moon's right about now. Yeah, I, I just think saw so. the moon last night. It was a sliver. Yeah. And I know it was a new moon. Yeah, the moon is, I think it is, is first uh, quarter waxing right now. Right now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, in bulk, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Around here we have something called the January Thaw, which usually coincides with in bulk. And in Ireland they say when Bridget walks the land, the ice melts. So that's how I always know that Bridget is around, because all of a sudden you get this mysterious thaw, <laughs> and huh. it, it lasts for a week or two, and then the, mm-hmm. the cold comes back. It's, it's really interesting. Yeah. So first quarter, is, like you said, is right now. Yeah. Well, the, I always remember uh, yeah. in California, the, that's when the mugwort sprouts. The mugwort comes out right around February 1st everywhere. And uh, mm. I, knew, I knew in about a month I'd be harvesting. That's a fantastic healing herb. Mm-hmm. Um, that's an old, if you look up the Anglo-Saxon nine herbs charm, yeah. it's in there. But it's great for wound healing. Um, so it's really good for the skin, for healing the skin, and of course it's also good for psychic work, for opening the third eye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, here, you know, in we New Orleans... We tried to grow some here, we, didn't we? Where we, um, you know, if you can't throw a rock without hitting a psychic, um, mugwort mm-hmm. is more illegal than pot. What? Oh, yeah. that's right. That's, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, we. I started you, reading about it. You get sentenced it. to hard labor and stuff. We just <laughs> we just looked it up about a, a year ago, yeah. and there's all this information about how they really can't have it. And, and originally, and I, I thought, well, okay, that. maybe it's an invasive species here, yeah. something like that. No, it's the psychotropic effects of Wait a the minute, plant. so you can actually get busted for having mugwort? Te- yeah, technically, if, if, if I mean, cop knows how to spot if, mugwort, if they want to mess with you, uh, <laughs> technically they can. Yeah. Of course, they don't really want to mess oh with us about God. the pot either, but... Yeah. <laughs> our police I mean, Artemisia is a weed. If you drive yeah. down the highway here in Massachusetts, the whole highway is lined with, with yeah. Artemisia. Yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah, it's yeah. totally a weed. And it's it's on the books. It's on the books. It's weird. I don't understand. That is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Terrible. That's I, terrible. I know, I know. With all of our psychics, my goodness. Well... People, see, this is what I'm talking about here. Ellen's been just going on for the whole show. Been no lag in the show, no dead air. Imagine what you're going to get in an entire workshop with this woman. Look at all the stuff that we I learned a bunch of shit right now. Yeah. I mean, you y'all want to be at WitchCon? I'm telling you, you would just yeah. You know, her I, I never thought about worth the 95 first bucks. quarter and you know yes. full moon and last quarter. I how never it's knew that. more ideal yes. for that type of work. I never knew the word yeah. that, that, that cooties was the word for the little cooties. 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 Oh, I, I, I cooties. like cooties better. <laughs> Not cootie. Cooties are bugs. Cooties. Cooties. C l o o t i e. Yeah. I didn't, okay. I don't know. There was a word for, for that. Cooties. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we learned a bunch of stuff. Yes. <laughs> well, we got. Uh, well, I mean, I know the Celtic stuff. Yeah. The, the stuff that I'm, you know, talking about in the workshop and that I'm researching now is kind of new to me because I'm looking at deities from many, many different cultures, um, mm-hmm. like Egyptian. You know, I don't know much about Egyptian deities, but I'm I'm researching them and finding out exactly what they like. Mm-hmm. What they want on the altar, you know, how to honor them, what to burn, <laughs> you know, things like that. What well, makes it's, it exciting it's a whole that new, way? You know, uh, avenue for me. It's like an adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Each one of them. <laughs> you got to keep learning. You, you got to. And, and reading books, folks. Books. You got to read books. Books. <laughs> 
Well, I remember even back in the day, we had to read it, write it, and speak it. Every piece of the tradition, every piece of the lore, specifically because those three things make it stick in the right part of your brain. Uh, those, mm -hmm. those are old ways that are lost, I guess. Yeah, I mean, everybody should, if they call themselves a pagan, everybody should at least for a few years at some point in their life they should find a teacher, an actual live teacher. And it may not be the right teacher. It may end up being the wrong teacher. I've mm -hmm. had some of those. Yeah. Uh, but that's all a learning experience, you know? Yeah. And that's how you, you get, that's how you find depth. Yeah. And you, you find out who you are and what you need and which deities you are attracted to and what path you want to be on. Um, yeah. You know, because there's such richness out there. There's so much. Um, and even, you know, a bad teacher, you know, you learn what not to be or what's not acceptable in your world, you know, yeah, and what, what not, not to, to do. do. So I'll never do that. You yeah, know? yeah. You can but, learn something from everybody. Yep. And that's what WitchCon's all about, y'all. You can get over to witchcon.com. Check out that long list. We 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 gave up trying to read the list on the show. You it mean the presenters? Yeah, I run out of yeah. breath, and it just takes forever. <laughs> but yeah. you got to go there, see that list of presenters. Uh, over the next uh, several weeks on Wittershins, you never know when we're going to be popping up on the air. Um, more people download the show anyway, so it works out. But we do yeah, broadcast we've got, live we've got when you go on. We've got people scheduled at yeah. any day and... So Time right now much. we're live, and yep. it will be archived, and we've got uh, Charity Bedell at 5.30. Yep. And it'll be live and then archived. Um, but we're slowly working out working out the list of people. we got a bunch of uh, presenters online. So uh, if you're not following um, Wittershins, you should be following. On every format you're at, on iHeartRadio or Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Tumblr, and all the other goddamn places we are that I don't remember, they all have a follow button or subscribe or something uh, to that effect where you will get a notification when we go live. And uh, over the next couple of weeks, that's really the only way you're going to be able to follow the show if you want to hear it live uh, is to get those notifications because uh, uh, all hours of the day or night could become Wittershins time. Yep. Absolutely. It's that time of the year. <clears throat> yep. Well, Ellen, it's great having you on again. Wealth of information. And, and you, you we'll said you'll be at HexFest, and right? We'll in the you, summer? Yeah. yeah, I'm supposed to be at HexFest in New Orleans uh, yeah. in August. Great. And right. I'm looking forward to that. I've been to New Orleans. I went there one time years ago uh, to a festival that I was presenting at i can't remember the name of it oh dear but yeah. anyway i'm looking forward to it and i have this, this if anybody from new orleans is listening um i would love to do a walk in a graveyard at night with somebody with yeah. somebody yeah. who knows something I <laughs> think, somebody who knows something something yeah i think <laughs> the way it I is mean. right now if after you guys know yeah. i would just love to do yeah. that there are That's certain like cemeteries where you have to have a tour guide in order to go, or you have to be a you know a family member. I, I bet and they have friends that know which ones. Closed to the public, but yeah. but some of them are open. We'll see. We we yeah. know lots of people here. Yeah. Well, somebody somebody some local witch will know something, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. They just they closed a lot of stuff uh, for when COVID happened. Yeah. A bunch of graveyards that yeah. you used to be able to go in, you couldn't go. I don't know why. You know, graveyards weren't really a threat. Well, they COVID. closed the one, uh, number one, where Marie Laveau is because yeah. of vandalism. And oh, that, yeah, that's yeah. why they only let you go with a tour guide. Uh, anyway, we will find anyway. somebody to hook you up with. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so, and um, I think there's going to be a riverboat ride. At yeah. Oh, yes. That's oh, the, yes. the beginning. It was we all meet that's, on the riverboat. I mean, that that, that's really fun. That alone is epic. Yeah, and they just you know the whole town gets taken over by witches. We we got so many witches here, and then there's the vampires, and they're all witches too. And mm -hmm. uh, but then we really take over the town Hexfest weekend, and the vampires own this speakeasy uh, that gets just totally really overpopulated with witches. Like opening night, I don't even want to go into that. Well, place. even it's the so restaurant, the Vampire witches. Cafe, 
which is the restaurant that you know owned by the same people, um, that gets really crowded too yeah. during a hex fest. I mean, it's usually yeah. crowded, but even but, more so during. But Hexfest. for our listeners, that's Hex Fest, which yeah. we'll be talking about in another, you know, couple weeks. Yeah, yeah. May do a marathon on that one too. <laughs> but, uh, get yourself over there to WitchCon's coming up March third uh, to fifth, and uh, check out Ellen Everett. Everett Hopman and mm-hmm. myself, of course. Um, Ninety-five bucks, y'all. It's like, and you it's have like, it it's forever. Like maybe like a buck a presenter. Pretty much. And I know we're getting paid more than a Pretty buck, much. So it's going to work out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Ellen. Thanks for coming on the show. Uh, do you have any uh, well, last you, and, websites and to plug? Blessings on everybody who's listening. Okay. Tell uh, us same your, to you. Bless you. T- same tell to us you. you had a you had a blog. Website, I think you gave out earlier. Yeah, right my website there. is it's ellenevertopman.com. There you go. It's my, my name, just okay. ellenevertopman.com. Okay. Great. All right. I'm yeah. also on uh, Instagram now. <laughs> I yeah. just got on. Okay. Yeah. Under your under your name? Okay, I'll try and follow you there uh, too. I think so. If you just yeah, if you just search on my name, it should come right up. Yeah, I think I'm Uncle Birch there. So if you get a friend request, that'll be me. <laughs> Yep. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Well, blessed be. We'll see you at WitchCon, and then we'll see you at HexFest. Yep. <laughs> yep. See you soon. Okay. Thanks okay. for coming on. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. And okay. Let's see. Uh, I think we did all the plugs. Um, yes, Witterson is going to be. We're going to be back later today. If you're listening to the live broadcast, yeah, we'll be back we'll be like five thirty. Yeah, five thirty central. No rest for the wicked. We need that song in our lineup. Yeah, uh, they probably won't let us play it, but they will let us play this. Witterson's, we're out. <laughs>